The John Collins trade has finally happened years in the making, and if I'm honest, it's hilarious. But it's also very, very interesting for each of these teams. You can see the trade on the screen here. Essentially, this is a salary dump of John Collins. I think it's more than that for Utah, but for Atlanta, it really gives us some clues into what they're thinking long term for their team. So for the trade itself, and then we'll get to kind of the context around it. So interestingly, Phoenix actually almost made a John Collins trade a couple of months ago before they brought in Kevin Durant, they were gonna shift their roster around and make John Collins a pretty key part of what they were gonna do moving forward. And now Atlanta is basically just giving him away for like a future second round pick. They're getting back Rudy Gay, but basically it's just a salary dump of John Collins. And he's someone that has been in the rumors for years. They've been trying to get rid of him for years. They're trying to get a first round pick for him. And this all comes back to the fact that a couple of years ago, they gave him this gigantic contract extension that they kind of knew wasn't worth it, but they didn't just want to lose John Collins for nothing. And it's coming back to, to be a bit of an unfortunate outcome, you know, for Atlanta. This actively makes their team worse. It just does, like, despite the contract of John Collins, swapping him for Rudy Gay, like, you are just a worse basketball team for next year. And there are reasons still to do this for your, if you're Atlanta. But in terms of a grade of the trade, you're giving away the better player. You're not really getting anything back. And it's basically just a salary dump. For Utah, this is actually kind of interesting because clearly they're just using their salary cap space here to acquire a player that, yes, is on too big of a contract, but his value in terms of that contract is only going to go up here into the future. He's a good, solid player, and as that contract starts to get closer and closer to expiring, it could end up being a pretty decent trade asset down the road and or a player that you can just kind of continue to add to a, a group of really interesting guys there in Utah and he's still a young player. Like that's what I think happens sometimes with guys when they sign big contracts, everybody assumes that they're awful. John Collins is not awful. He has some holes in his game. He's not great, uh, you know, defensively he's improved, but he's not outstanding. He's a little bit too small uh, to play the five. He's not a good enough shooter to play the four. There's some fit issues there, but Utah has the ability to put him around plenty of spacing, plenty of playmaking and really create a pretty interesting role for them uh, there in Utah. And again, a year or two from now, he's gonna be a pretty valuable player as an expiring contract. And I think that is really the angle for them of course, they win the deal because they're giving up basically nothing to get a guy that, yes, has a big contract, but ultimately um, was worth more than what they ended up trading away. Now, what this means for Atlanta moving forward, this to me has two main side effects. One, I think it continues to show everyone how big of a deal for everyone except for Phoenix this second apron thing is. This is the second contract already this offseason, big contract that we've seen just dumped by a team that just signed the deal. The Jordan Poole contract getting traded for Chris Paul and now John Collins being sent to Utah. These are deals that were signed within the last couple of seasons, couple of off seasons, and already teams are jumping ship on those not to create salary cap space. For Golden State or Atlanta, this does not allow them to be active in free agency. This does not provide them any more flexibility in terms of building their team and improving their team. In Atlanta's case, they're actively making their team worse to try and dodge the second apron and change the financial structure of their team and of their roster moving forward because they have a DeJounte Murray extension coming up. He's only got one, one year left. In addition to what they already have, Trey Young signed to, as well as a handful of other decently signed contracts on the roster. Other guys like Anyaka Kongwu will be coming up for a contract extension soon as well. Point being, they were going to get expensive very quickly as a roster, and it's a team that's not like they're having a ton of team success over there either. And if they wanted to continue to keep that group together, they had to pick a guy to get rid of. And that guy, of course, ends up being John Collins. But this is a really tough look for Atlanta because when you go back, I think it was two off seasons ago that they signed John Collins to the extension or to the new contract, I should say. And then last off season, they trade the future first for DeJounte Murray, knowing he was going to need a contract extension in two years. They didn't, I don't think anybody anticipated the second apron, which is essentially a hard cap for every team, again, with the exception of Phoenix. I don't think they, or really anybody anticipated it being that difficult and that big of an issue in terms of having these bigger contracts, but certainly it was mistimed in hindsight now, looking back, the semi all-in moves that they made, whether it be spending big on Collins, knowing that they had a Trey Young extension, knowing they had other interesting young talent on the roster, but then also the DeJounte Murray extension and the trade that they made to get him, all those look really bad in hindsight now, because not only did it not really improve their team overall from a record standpoint, but now they're just dumping guys like John Collins. Now the benefit for them is although, yes, it makes their team worse, it wasn't a salary dump in the way that Jordan Poole was for Golden State, where you're giving up even though it is heavily protected, a future first round pick. Atlanta is just getting rid of John Collins for a worse player in Rudy Gay, probably play for them a little bit, but a worse player and a future second round pick, which is not the value level that you'd want for a player of John Collins' talent. And again, it just comes back to the contract issue, whether it be Beal, whether it be Poole, whether it be in this case, John Collins, 
having a bad contract really limits the value of a player going from team to team and ultimately that's what happened here with Atlanta John Collins is worth more than this they couldn't get any more they've tried for years and they finally just ended up having to get rid of them and again it doesn't help your team it doesn't create cap space flexibility it is strictly so that the owners of the team don't have to pay a ton of money and go all the way into this second apron as well for a team that's winning you know 42 games so I understand it it makes sense it's something they've been trying to do for years but ultimately they probably tr should have tried to move John Collins before they gave him the deal or go into this with the understanding that this is going to be an expensive team and that maybe you should have looked at making some other moves, whether it be trading DeJounte Murray, trading Trey Young, and kind of resetting things a little bit more because now you're in a situation where the, the, the team is still going to be really, really expensive. But now you're just going to be a little bit worse and there's really no path, no upside in my opinion to making this like a 50 to 55 win team, a true contender in the Eastern Conference. And now you've just made yourselves actively worse. They're limited in terms of first round picks because of the Murray trade, not super limited, but a little bit limited and already are showing that they don't wanna pay an absolute crazy amount of money for a team that is again, not really accomplishing what they want them to on the floor. All of this together doesn't really say, oh my gosh, the trade is awful. I think it's a trade they probably did have to make. But if you're looking at it strictly from a basketball standpoint, it's not fantastic for Atlanta. And as we move forward into the offseason, I would expect that this is not the last, you know, salary dumping type move that we see uh, this offseason with, with guys that maybe you would expect to have more value, like Jordan Poole, like John Collins, teams like Utah, teams like Oklahoma City that we saw on draft night, you know, moving up in the draft by taking on salary. Uh, there are going to be teams like that that maybe don't want to spend a ton of free agency money on, on a couple of different guys around the league. But they'd be okay spending some you know, some of their cap space getting back an asset in return, whether it be a first round pick, a second round pick, whatever the case may be. For Utah in this scenario, the, the asset and the upside is whatever John Collins could be moving forward, helping their team, as well as you know becoming an asset uh, in a year or two as that contract continues to expire. But you're going to see this not only this year, but next year as we approach the second apron era. Players that previously signed these big expensive contracts are no longer going to fit into the structure of teams unless you are the contender of contenders, unless you're a top five team, you're a top two or three team in your conference, which certainly Atlanta isn't. These kinds of contracts are just not a luxury you can afford to have in your team. You're, you're going to have to be leaner as a team in terms of your team building. You're going to have to pick one to three big time players that you want to pay all your money to. And clearly for Atlanta, John Collins was no longer one of those players. And that's why you make this move. And I think the trade itself is relatively self-explanatory, but what it means for this offseason and as a continued proof of concept of what the second apron means for all these other teams around the league, again, with the exception of apparently Phoenix, for pretty much every other team, what that means is you're going to have to dump players like Poole, like Collins, that yes, are talented, but the contract is just too much. And I think moving forward this offseason as well as next, that's going to be a theme we're going to continue to see.